This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Vassallo with TheRhinestoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are that regular. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. It's Friday. Good Friday, April 19th, 2019. I'm Terry Combs. You can find me at equipmentzone.com and also at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at aaronmontgomery.info. Uh, today's show, we'll be welcoming in Lindsay Salcedo to talk about the transition from apparel decorating hobbyist to decorating professional. And uh, we're also, as you can tell, joined by our producer, Eric Campbell, our resident embroidery guy. So, um, we're yeah, we're really excited to talk to Lindsay here. We're also going to talk to her about the applique getaway. Uh, I think when we... Uh, first uh, got this show started, Terry, you had a comment about that. You're like, that's a perfect name for an event. I, I, I love that name. <laughs> that's, uh, what a great name for an event. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Awesome. Well, let's dive right in. We got lots of folks are already joining us this morning, so we appreciate them. And uh, let's just say hi to a couple of folks. We've got, good morning. Uh, who wants to tackle that name for me? I'm going to go Carlissa. with Carlissa. Yeah, Carlissa. <laughs> Nice. Schler book. Thank you. All right. Now, who's going to get Jim's last name right here? I don't see Jim. <laughs> Jim oh, you don't see Jim? Oh, Jim, yeah, yeah. Jim Kazikis. Kazikis. Yeah. Kazikis. <laughs> Did I, uh, I don't know. And, uh, Close and, enough, right? <laughs> and then our, our sponsor, Brian, joining us this morning. And uh, Christine Shreve, good morning. Happy Friday to you. Happy uh, Good Friday, as uh, as Terry mentioned. And uh, mm -hmm. Donna is ready. <laughs> Christine <laughs> laughed about, I don't know if these guys are that regular. So, uh, that you know, yesterday uh, I was posting on Twitter about pretty good Thursday uh, before, <laughs> before Good Friday. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure you guys aren't that regular. Let me just, uh, after that joke, I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. Also, <laughs> having hung out with the guys, no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just the right kind of irregular people. <laughs> Sherry says this sounds fun, and uh, uh, Joe, who uh, is going to, we're going to talk about Joe here in just a second, and I'm going to try to butcher his name as I do all names. <laughs> Man, okay, well we we got uh, we got everything uh, going. I've got lots of people just saying hi this morning, so we're we're gonna. Um, you guys keep commenting, keep bringing that information. Uh, one thing, I, I learned something new this last Wednesday. I went to a, a, an event called E for E is experts for entrepreneurs here in St. Louis. And uh, one of the social media guru folks that was there mentioned that uh, they've confirmed that Facebook uh, comments don't carry any weight as far as getting you onto people's news, news feeds unless there are seven words in the comment. So um, <laughs> as you're commenting, try to get seven words in, all right? That's what we're looking for, seven word comments today. That was, uh, that was very surprising to me. I, I mean, how would you find that information out unless you went to an event like you went to? So, yep. but, hey, we're all about uh, education, getting out there and learning new things. So, <laughs> And now we're educating uh, our listeners. So we're going to be counting go. the words in your comments. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine everybody who's just like, okay, how am I? <laughs> <laughs> just separate One, two, out three. the letters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just spaces between everything. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, Ter Terry, what news did, do you have here? Uh, not, not so much a news item, Aaron. I, I, I won't be here next week. Uh, Eric will be uh, covering my spot uh, as we're talking Corel Draw. Uh, but uh, I, I'm the reason I'm going to be gone is uh, with Equipment Zone, we're doing a whole new roadshow concept. Uh, we're going to be in Atlanta. It's going to be, uh, and it's for direct to garment, obviously. But it's uh, uh, it's going to be less about uh, the the Epson F2100 and more about here's what it can do. And so uh, you know, we'll be printing regular T-shirts, but we'll also be printing on denim. We're going to be printing on shoes. We're going to be printing on hats, tri blends. Uh, then uh, our good friend Jay Bissell will be talking uh, about uh, telling your company's story and how to sell your product. So it's kind of a kind of a change up on the the concept concept of a roadshow. But uh, if you are within driving distance of Atlanta, you can go and sign up for free at equipmentzone.com, and it's right there on the homepage uh, button at the top. And uh, we would love to see you there. <laughs> nice, very good. That sounds like a great event, Terry. And uh, we're gonna, we're going to miss you, but I'm sure we'll we'll do just fine. Man, the, the comments are great today. You guys are on fire, and I love it. Um, Todd posted his comment seven words. 
There we go. That should work, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then Sherry has, any of this. You me, almost made me spit out my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and then Sherry has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus four to grow on. <laughs> and then Karen uh, shares. Uh, sounds like first grade. A sentence must have seven words in it. <laughs> oh man, good stuff. Um, and uh, Cindy says, hoping to hear about upcoming classes in the DFW area. And uh, yes, we are going to talk about a fantastic event in the DFW area here shortly. So um, yes, stay tuned. Stay tuned. All right. Well, for me, uh, I had just a, a quick, we got a, a really nice email this week from one of the listeners, Tina and Brad Duncan. And I wanted to just share what they wrote because um, this is what we'd love to get from you guys, you know, keep this stuff coming. This is what keeps us moving and going. Um, so here's what uh, Tina and Brad had to say. It would love a show or two about how the industry is addressing sustainability and being eco-friendly as well as where to find eco-friendly blanks, how to market to that niche, et cetera. We live near the beach and are working to provide more earth-friendly options for our customers. And I'm adding this part, Earth Day coming up. So there we go. Um, and uh, then they went on to say, I listen to your podcast every week on my way home from my full-time IT job, assorting, absorbing all of the tips and information for our part-time hustle until we can retire and do it full-time. Uh, I was thrilled when Eric joined the program as our decorating business started with embroidery and I'm still learning to digitize. Great move, Eric. We <laughs> knew we were doing the right thing. Um, <laughs> so, and then also enjoy hearing from the ladies in the business. And we've got a fantastic lady Absolutely. joining us here in just a little bit. So that that's the kind of feedback that we want. And to, to just kind of make sure you guys know that we take this feedback to heart. Um, I actually was able to reach out to a guy Terry and I met back at the very first. In fact, Eric met uh, him mm -hmm. too, Skya Nelson from Fed by yeah. Threads. And uh, he's really awesome. leading the charge in the uh, sustainability and eco-friendly side of things. So I was able to connect up with him. We're working on a date. Um, it's either going to be him or one of his uh, one of his uh, colleagues there joining us to talk about that very topic that Tina and Brad brought to the table. So uh, good stuff. And uh, yeah, so and then also five things uh, from our regulators, the, the regulators, which are you guys, the listeners, the followers, our tribe, the people we love interacting with each week here. Um, Joe is going to be sharing five things with us again today. We're, Terry's going to read it for him, but uh, Joe has been prolific with the five things, and we really appreciate uh, him being a, a part of the show and, and bringing on his stuff. So uh, good stuff there. And uh, Eric is coming back here in just a second. Welcome back, Eric. <laughs> uh, thank you. I thought you guys dropped out when I realized that must be me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Good stuff. So that, that's that's kind of not, not really too much news items, but again, thank you very much for the feedback, Tina and Brad. And Joe, thank you for participating in, in five things. You guys can participate in five things as well. Uh, just head over to our website at uh, tworegularguys.com. That's the number two. And uh, then go slash five things, the number five things, and uh, you you too can be uh, part of the show. So great right. stuff. Well, uh, Aaron, as you said, you know, we uh, want to thank all of our regular listeners, the regulators, and uh, any new listeners tuning in today, if you have an idea for the show, like Tina and Brad, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can go to our contact us page at two, the number two, regularguys.com, or reach us uh, on social media. We are everywhere as the two regular guys, two, the number two regular guys. Uh, if you're catching the video live, uh, via Facebook Live, please jump in and participate. And we have a lot of folks doing that already. Uh, with that, let's hear a word from our gold sponsor. This episode of The Two Regular Guys is brought to you by Brighton Leap, makers of the Reggie award-winning and Brilliance embroidery software. And Brilliance is different. You don't need hardware dongles or to trade active seats for every user. One license lets you run every computer in your shop at once. And Brilliance runs natively on both Mac and Windows. Your single license lets you install on both platforms. And Brilliance is modular. If you only need customizing with lettering, sizing, and recoloring, you can get just that. And Brilliance's unique stitch processing tools even allow you to resize and improve expanded stitch files from digitizers or stock collections for faster running, lighter embroideries. If you decide you need fully featured digitizing, it's fast and easy to add powerful design creation tools to your system. You can start with any tool and build your ideal kit. All in Brilliance programs run standalone or work together in their unified platform. See the difference for yourself at embrilliance.com.
two regular guys listeners can enter the exclusive code 2RG, that's the number 2RG, at embrilliance.com slash store for 10% off your entire purchase. All right. Well, thank you very much to Embrilliance for their support. Eric, uh, I believe that there's a big announcement that uh, Embrilliance and, and you're yeah. going to make for us. So the floor is yours, sir. Absolutely. That's the great thing today is not only do we have the spot from Brilliance, but uh, we're proud to announce that we have some incredible updates coming out for our Stitch Artist digitizing software and for the Brilliance line. And the great thing is we've got a major highlight thing that I absolutely want you to hear about that we're going to add native object-based font publishing that's going to be included into Stitch Artist 3 at no additional cost to the users. So if you're a digitizer, you know what this means. Uh, people expect that Stitch-based fonts. These are object-based fonts that resize very well native fonts, and people are going to be able to publish those. No extra charge for the module. Uh, that's just one of the many uh, highly requested features in the new release. And the great thing, we've released a beta that's currently on our Stitch Artist user community on Facebook. It's the Stitch Artist Digitizing Fans Group. If you're there, you can go get the beta today but the beta is going to be more widely available after the Easter weekend. So right now, we have it out now. You can test all the new tools and other new tools that we previewed actually as part of the Reggie's win are now in that new beta. So if you've been waiting for the new tools we previewed as part of uh, what we gave our fans after the Reggie's win, they are in the beta. Go check it out now. And after Easter weekend, it'll be more broadly available. Awesome. All right. All well, right. Lisa Shaw gave us a, a very emphatic yes to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I imagine she was doing this. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot of work going into it, and we're very excited about what's coming up. All awesome. right. Well, we uh, thanks again to uh, Brighton Leap for their support. Uh, they are our gold sponsor, but we do have other sponsorship opportunities available. You can check that out at two, the number two, regularguys.com slash sponsorship. Are you guys ready to uh, to bring uh, Lindsay in and get started? I think so. Yeah, one one quick thing. I just wanted to kind of uh, address. So, so Kathy uh, had said that uh, Eric and Aaron are very blurry, but the sound is great. And and uh, yeah, just just so you guys know, we are pushing this system, internet <laughs> video thing to the very uh, limits of its possibilities here. So as the internet kind of uh, is the the it's not as <laughs> fast as it might need to be, uh, the software actually compensates for that by just lowering the uh, quality of the video. So Terry's uh, Terry's video must be, uh, or his internet speed must be fantastic because his looks good. And I I, I'm in a cool say that you guys actually look that way in real life. So. It's true. It's true. <laughs> we just I, look bad. Yeah. I did have some uh, beer and wings with my volleyball friends last night. And uh, so <laughs> I am a little more fuzzy than normal today, but uh, you know, it's, it's science. So it's science. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let, let's go ahead and bring our guest in. We'll quit wasting any more time here because we've got some fantastic information to get to. So Terry, when you are ready. All right. Well, Lindsay Salcedo entered the embroidery, embroidery industry as a digitizer in 2007, helping fuel the surge in the cottage and children's market. In 2011, she founded the Applique Getaway, awesome name, uh, an event aimed at hobby embroiderers and small businesses. The event has grown, grown alongside the target audience, adding vendors and classes featuring software, vinyl and digital cutting, sublimation, commercial embroidery and more, all while maintaining the event's fun and friendly atmosphere. Welcome to the show, Lindsay. Hi, thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. This is uh, going to be a blast. We've got a ton of people tuning in. And and uh, so, yeah, let's let's start off, I guess, uh, before we get into all the events and the questions about it, that. Tell us a little <laughs> bit more about you and, and what brought you to the world of embroidery and, and how did that turn into what you're you're part of today? Well, I came into embroidery totally unexpectedly. Um, I was actually working in retail. I was a young mom, I had two kids, and I left my retail job because I wanted to go back to college. Um, I had my second child, my third year of college, so I decided I wanna go back to school. And to supplement my income while I went back to school, I started selling children's shoes on the internet, on eBay, uh, because I had you know experience with retail, so that sure. was just the next logical step for me. Yeah. When I was selling the kids' shoes, I realized that a lot of my customers who were buying the shoes were buying them for photo shoots to display with these beautiful outfits, handmade outfits. They were full of ruffles and just huge, vibrant appliques. And I'm talking about hand appliques, the zigzag on a sewing machine, fusible applique, mm -hmm. but beautiful work. And I saw that they were selling these outfits for like four to $500 each on eBay. <laughs> wow. And I thought, 
okay, I, I need to stop selling shoes and I need to start selling these outfits, obviously, um, except that I'd never sewn a stitch in my life. <laughs> so, um, the next logical step would be to go to Walmart and to buy the best sewing machine because, of course, the best sewing machine would allow me, of course, naturally to create these, you know, fantastic outfits. So I bought the most expensive sewing machine that Walmart had. It was like $350. Mm -hmm. Brought it home, broke a bunch of needles, um, had no idea what I was doing, got frustrated, and it sat in my house in the box for about six months. Mm -hmm. um, until I decided, I don't know what, what prompted me, but I got online and I found a sewing forum. And they explained to me that what I bought was a combination sewing embroidery machine. That's why it was mm. the most expensive machine and not yeah. because it was going <laughs> to allow me to make everything I wanted to make. So um, I started experimenting with the embroidery unit and I found that I was very limited. Um, at that time, this was early 2000s, coming into mid 2000s. I had what was on the machine, which was like Mickey Mouse and stuff. Um, there were cards which were way out of my budget as a young mom and a college student. There were stock design collections, which were, mm -hmm. I mean, no, no offense. They were kind of boring. I mean, they were like woodland <laughs> scenes and like cactuses and, you know, just not oh, something yeah. that I wanted to put on my kids' clothes. And I couldn't afford any of it. It was really expensive. So the next step um, that I took was I looked into, well, what do I do to put what I want to make onto this machine and make it. So that was digitizing software. Um, and I just about had a heart attack when I saw the price. <laughs> so I took a huge leap of faith, um, huge leap of faith. And I sold my entire shoe in uh, inventory to a single person. And I used that money to buy my first software. And wow. I just started clicking around. Um, I did have a graphic design background, but it's, I mean, peas and carrots. Um, and I've always been an artist. I can draw. So that helped. Yeah, But it, it took me a while and I started clicking around and I thought, I like this. This fits. This works with the way my brain works. Um, awesome. And I started creating designs and I started putting those designs on the clothes. I was still in the mindset that I was going to sell this fantastic line of children's apparel. I had kids. I love clothes. You know, mm -hmm. it just seemed like the perfect fit. Yeah. So I started making stuff and then I started sharing my creations um, on these sewing forums. And nobody wanted to buy the clothes that I was making. They wanted to know, where did you get that design? Yeah. And then I said, I made it. And then they said, do you sell it? And then, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually, I did. Yeah. I decided I, I should start selling these designs. Um, there wasn't much like what I was producing on the market at that time. Um, I did something that some people may hate me for, but I think in the end it worked out well. And that's I lowered the price point quite a bit. Mm. Uh, I made the designs affordable. Um, and so, I mean, we can't charge forty, fifty dollars for, uh, you know, a group of designs or an alphabet anymore. But that opened the door to a huge flood of new embroiderers, other moms who wanted to make things, and and just kind of changed the the direction of of how that industry was going. And that's been, I put my uh, my website online in August of two thousand seven. It took me about a year of playing around with the software to feel comfortable. Um, to be able to sell and and it took off. I wasn't prepared. I guess we, we'll talk about that later, but I wasn't really prepared <laughs> for the growth. Um, I kind of landed upside down on my head in this thing, but it's something 12 years and I still absolutely love what I do. I love drawing. Um, I love creating for, for kids. I like making cute mm -hmm. things um, just because my things are cute. I mean, there's still a huge technical aspect to it. It's still running a business. Um, Cute doesn't undermine, you know, the, the business aspect of it all. But that's how I landed in the embroidery world. Uh, it was go. really, really unexpected, but I'm, I'm very thankful. It was just, a, you know, a series of perfectly timed events. And, and here I am. And then the event, um, that's what we're talking about today. So, yeah. like I mentioned, I, I found myself uh, in these online communities and there was such a a wonderful kinship and we all had something in common um, and we would all bounce ideas off each other and give each other, uh, you know, credit and praise for our work, constructive criticism where needed. And, you know, we built a lot of friendships. Um, during this time, we saw the rise of Facebook and with Facebook came the Facebook group. So yeah. we moved from kind of a forum setting to a Facebook group setting. We became friends on Facebook. We shared our kids, our families, um, our lives with each other. And we just came, became very connected, very large community. Nice. And from that community, we saw other businesses spring up to serve mm. 
these embroiderers, um, new blanks companies that were specifically making blanks um, for the type of designs and the type of work that we were doing, fabric businesses. Uh, these businesses just started popping up everywhere and they were serving the specific community. Uh, and we, we would talk about, hey, we should have a get together. And it, it always sounded like it would be something just for fun, like let's get together, and, you know, <laughs> we'll hang out, and whatever. But something clicked in my mind. Actually, my husband um, went to a work conference and he loved his mm. job. He was a, a teacher and a coach at the time and he hated the conference. He came home and he was like, I couldn't stay awake. It was super boring. And I thought, you know, <laughs> if you're having a conference and it's work related and you like your job, then it, it should be fun. And the gear started turning and I thought, well, we can take this fun get together and let's make it business related. I mean, we can go have fun. We can learn about our business. We can buy things and we can write it off on our taxes. So um, <laughs> there's lots of pluses here. <laughs> That's um, awesome. So yeah, the, we started we started thinking about it. This was in, I want to say 2010. Uh, the first event was actually going to be in 2011, but um, I found myself uh, pregnant. <laughs> I have six <laughs> kids, so I've been pregnant a lot. <laughs> over the past 10 years but at this time so we we put it off um until 2013 and very interestingly anyone who went to the 2013 event saw that i was about eight months pregnant <laughs> when, we, when we put that one on so uh that was a surprise and i just wasn't going to postpone it again but our, our 2013 event was the the first event i knew absolutely nothing about events i had never been to a trade show i still have never been to another trade show um, wow and yeah, so I, I mean, that's, I think that's part of what makes our event really unique is that I'm not borrowing from any other events. I'm not bringing any inspiration. It's just purely based on our attendees and their experience and their feedback and what we see on site. But um, I, I told my husband about, about the idea and he was like, he's probably thinking I'm crazy, but he was like, okay. Um, and he suggested that I call one of our friends who had some experience in event planning. Um, so my husband is involved heavily in sports and coaching and, and his friend did some sports events, some bowl games and um, some other types of, of uh, sporting events. So he had the event experience as far as dealing with venues and things like that. I didn't have that experience at the time, but we came together. Uh, we put it on the first year. It was I mean, it was a totally new thing. It was uh, we actually brought in uh, close to 500 people for the first year, which I mean, it's not a huge but for a first year, like, let's That's just put impressive. this thing together. <laughs> <Pretty good>. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. It was great. Um, and we had vendors and the vendors did well. They sold a lot of fabric. Um, I had a lot of my digitizing colleagues there and we did uh, classes, a lot of, I guess, peer expert instruction um, and displays, just really cool stuff. And it was just, it was fun. Um, and I think that's what stood out in everybody's mind is that it was fun. We went and we learned and we bought a ton of stuff, but we made lasting friendships and it just felt like here we are. These are my people. This is my tribe. I'm home. Nice. So it's, awesome. it's just been growing ever since. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. So we've got, uh, got people checking in here. Marshall says, yo peeps getting here late. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was trying to be our producer on, on, uh, what was that Tuesday, Terry? Uh, so Eric, just, just so you know, just putting you on notice there. <laughs> Chris <laughs> says, says I'm here. So uh, we, we do have a question here from one of the, one of the listeners, Mike Wilkerson says, uh, what was your brain thinking when someone says, yeah, but do you sell the designs and it destroys the general business model you had for something you thought would be just another thing that is in the chain of to do's for your job. That was a long I was surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised to hear that someone else was interested in the designs because it just wasn't something that I had thought about at all. I wasn't prepared for it. Um, I bought the software to enhance my own business offerings. So it really just started things moving in, in my brain because I did have experience as, as a graphic designer. I did have web design experience. So it was fairly easy for me to get these things on the internet and, and for sale fairly quickly. Um, of course, a lot of stumbling blocks and learning along the way. Uh, just one year working with embroidery files is not a whole lot um, of experience to just learn the quirks and the ins and the outs of the files and converting them. And, and then of course, there's, a, there's just a huge, digitizing is just a beast. Um, so there's a lot of other technical aspects that never, really never kind of stop evolving. So yeah, um, it wasn't what I expected, but I, I made it work and, and I'm really happy that I did. And, and it really was because of the feedback of the people who were buying my designs that kept me going because it started out 
do you sell the designs? And I had to pause and, you know, okay, <laughs> let me, let me get that going. And then I got it going and then they loved them. And, you know, it was great to have that when I was small, um, that interaction. And I still, I mean, I'm not like a huge business now, but I have a lot more customers, but it's nice to have that interaction and get that feedback and then grow your business from that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, totally. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, Eric, you're uh, you're next up. So I'll, I'll there was get so much to here. digest. That was yeah, awesome. I'm sorry. Yeah. First thing. <laughs> no, no, seriously. First thing. Your story is so awesome. And part of it's just like I'm I'm breaking my neck nodding because I slid into the industry <laughs> sideways myself. Like I was doing a medieval studies degree. <laughs> so as people as people who know that I slid sideways into the industry and <laughs> fell on my head too. So I, I just was like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, like I'm with yes. you. I get it. You get it. <laughs> I get it. I get it. How it is where you just like you wake up a digitizer one day. <laughs> it's, it's a different yes. world. It's my new job. <laughs> yep. Yes. Mine too. <laughs> Twenty yeah. years ago, mine too. But it's fun. I mean, it works with the way my brain works. So I'm incredibly thankful that I get to do something that that I actually still like doing. It's awesome. and I do it almost every day. Um, and it's been it's going to be 13 years actually this summer. 14, awesome. 14, 15 since I got the software, but 13 since I put my designs on the, on, on the online. <laughs> <laughs> well, count me in your tribe then. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm part of the group. So uh, with the, with the event, and by the way, the way you've described the event is so awesome. So I, I just want to go into the event, jump into it a little bit. I know that because you're an organizer event, you've been running this. I know that you know the benefits of getting out to an event and you'd recommend embroiderers get out there and mix it up, get to a real world gathering. But what do you think like the greatest value is in attending an event like the applique getaway and what's kind of the sleeper benefit you think people miss? Well, I think the the greatest benefit would be that a lot of us do shopping online. Uh, online, I mean, you see what's going on with retail right now. Everybody's shopping online, but in our industry, you know, there's a lot of textiles and there's a lot of things going on and happening and to see it in person, to feel it, to experience it, to look at it, to have an idea for your business and then to see someone else executing that in person, making it happen, makes it a lot more approachable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm thinking I want to add this type of decoration to my business, then I go and then I see someone doing it. Um, it's not just like watching a YouTube video or trying to break down written steps or looking at a tutorial with photographs. I'm seeing someone do it and it makes me realize, okay, hey, I can do this too. And just, it's like the world of online shopping under one roof. You can, and then to be able to meet the faces behind the businesses also. So, you know, say I've been buying fabric from this business for five years and I get to meet the owner and I get to hear her story or his story and just learn more about them. It's just a personal connection uh, that benefits the customer and the vendor. It's something that you just can't replace the, the personal connection. Um, the sleeper benefit Gosh, so much has come out of this event that's just not even related to embroidery. I mean, these people are all crafty people on the same yeah, roof, yeah. but but genuine, genuine friendships. Um, mm -hmm. the, the first year, a lot of us uh, that did the same thing, colleagues met each other for the first time and met some of our long term customers and went home with those long term customers as new employees, which wow. allowed us to grow our businesses um, and, and just really we made lasting lifelong connections and friendships that really solidify uh, not just personally but even on on the business side uh, these are the glue that holds our, our business together as those personal connections that we make just being around people who are like-minded and have the same passions there's something that you can't really put into words what that experience is like so that that's what i would think the sleeper benefit would be so for, for the cynical among us when we say networking that's the nice way to put it. That's much nicer than networking. <laughs> but yeah, having a support yes. system like that is awesome. I, I mean, like I said, I'm I'm ready to sign up and show up at the getaway right now. <laughs> so I don't know about anybody else. We'd love to have you. you. You should come check it out because it's really something that I can't. We tried to make a, a video last year to capture some of it, but it's really hard to even capture in a video. It's something that you have to be there to experience. Yeah, that's really awesome. Yeah, we, we have, have a uh, <laughs> we have, we have another question from uh, from a listener. Sure. Sharon Sharon wants to know what advice do you have for someone who has never digitized but would like to? Well, interestingly, okay, at the getaway, I've taught a digit a digitizing class almost every year, and people think I'm nuts. Like, why are you giving away trade secrets? You know, what are you? Why are you <laughs> teaching other people to take over your business? And it's not like that at all, because. The best advice really is to be fully aware of what digitizing is. I think anyone who starts out with an embroidery machine 
uh, like me, I bought it at Walmart. There's a lot of us that have, you know, Walmart <laughs> machines. <laughs> uh, no shame in that. Um, and I thought that I could just go on the internet and like pull a picture of SpongeBob and somehow the machine would know how to stitch it on whatever I put in there. <laughs> so I was totally un uninformed. Um, and then I got yep. the software and I thought, okay, now the software is going to do it. It's going to make my design. I'm going to put it on and it's going to look awesome. And it did and it looked horrible. <laughs> it was the worst. And I, that's, you know, brought about a lot of frustration. So I think if someone is looking into digitizing, um, they should just be fully aware of what it is. And if you're the mm -hmm. kind of person who likes things that are intricate and detailed, take time, take thought. Um, and I mean, to compare it to, to photography, um, I mean, a great photographer can take a beautiful picture with an iPhone. Um, or you could give me like some really expensive Nikon camera and I would take a blurry picture of my carpet. So um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it really um, just to be realistic with your expectations. Um, know that, that it's a quite detailed and involved process, no matter what kind of designs you're putting out. Um, requires a lot of patience and practice. It's very rewarding if you like these kind of things though. It's like finishing a 5,000 piece puzzle and looking at it with, you know, a great deal of um, admiration and, you know, a great sense of accomplishment. But if you don't like these things, if you're more of a person that doesn't like to sit down for hours and click and click and click, then um, it might not be something that interests you. So yeah, that would be my advice would to be really research what exactly goes into digitizing before uh, you decide to move forward with that step. Very good. So, as a digitizer, let me just hold my hands up and go preach. That was like <laughs> a word that was totally correct. Uh, and I'm going to add to that: watch good designs run. So, like, if you yes, get designs yes. from Lindsay, watch her designs run over and over in your replay, and you'll learn the way she works and the way any of us work. So, yeah, I totally agree. And yeah, yeah. seriously, 100%. That is. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely the way I described it too. So uh, once again, part of the tribe. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yes. Well, learn learn <laughs> about it first, kids. It's not a push button event. You're gonna have no. To there's no magic button. That's what I kept right. thinking when you said. There's button. never <laughs> going to be a magic button. <laughs> no, no. Find it anywhere on you this machine. It's, <laughs> nope. it's funny because all these years in, and sometimes I still experiment and like see, yep. like, okay, has the software evolved any that I can cut down my my work time or that I can make a few clicks and produce something? Uh, not really, unless the design is really simple. Um, mm. There really aren't any shortcuts. In fact, uh, I saw, and, and I mean, the, the technology behind this is really cool. There's machines sure. now that will digitize. I had to make the quote symbols <laughs> because uh, machines quote. machines and computers don't digitize. People yep. digitize. So um, the technology is really cool that, that a machine can produce a design, but it's just um, unless you're working with really, really simple shapes um, and very few color changes you just can't have great expectations for that kind of stuff uh, who knows where the technology will go going forward but that's uh, my two cents on that one hundred percent well speaking of the getaway uh, uh, Lindsay talk to us a little bit about uh, who the people are that that go to this event and 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 who are they selling to well um firstly we're we're heavily female um probably 80 85 percent and, and the others are spouses <laughs> uh, but what i, I mean Plus what one. i love about the getaway <laughs> right um what that's one thing that i love about the getaway is that if you um if you have a partner or a family member or a friend and they want to learn more about what you're doing it's the perfect environment to do that because we are really a friendly and fun environment you can come and you know kind of show off like this is what i do and this is what i'm learning about and um we i think we primarily serve still the children's market as well as the boutique market and the gift market so a lot of um our our attendees you know we have a huge range we have people just getting in to apparel decoration uh, maybe they were like me and they just bought a machine at walmart and they have no idea what to do with it and they're welcome um, and we can help them we can help them get to the next level we always have um, a local machine dealer there. So if they want to make the step from the Walmart machine to um, a machine that they've purchased with a dealer where they can get some education, um, we're there for them for that. We have folks who have already made that step who might have a, a home machine, but they're ready to jump up to multi-needle machine. Um, so we can help them 
do that. The education's there, the products are there. Say they already have the multi-needle machine, they wanna go commercial, we can help them with that too. We have commercial vendors there. Um, next step, maybe they wanna add vinyl, vinyl cutting heat press, we can help them with that. Rhinestones, uh, we just recently added sublimation, digitizing, so we're there every step of the way. Um, and the cool thing is we also serve hobbyists, hobbyists and small businesses. What's great about what the industry that we work in is that it's so fun that people actually do it for a hobby. So how lucky are we that we get to work in an industry that's so enjoyable that people actually do it for fun. So the hobbyists, you know, we serve them too. that whatever they want to come and add to their hobby, uh, they're more than welcome, you know, to come in and check it out. Um, one thing that's unique about our event is that we do bring in, um, we bring in a business attorney. So we help mm. people that want to make the transition from hobby to business. That's not something that you might see at a different show. So um, these are things that are really unique to <laughs> our segment of the industry that we try to, to really cater to. So I guess that's, yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's pretty much a good rundown of who, <laughs> <laughs> who we serve and what they do. Hopefully. Nice. <laughs> nice. Super awesome. Yeah, really awesome. Uh, the the comments are are fast and furious here, and and fantastic. <laughs> and so we're we're not even gonna be able to get to them all. I'm trying to post them up on the screen. So if you're actually catching this on the podcast version, you have to get over to our Facebook page at facebook.com/slash two regular guys and check out the video. Get involved in the comments. We're gonna try to get to as many of them as we can here. Uh, the most recent comment, though, uh, Lindsay is from applique getaway says Lindsay's husband sounds like a great guy can can you confirm <laughs> yes. he's the best all right good okay that is confirmed um yeah so good yes, stuff there absolutely <laughs> all right um so, so we're, we're fun that's the i i have to add one comment really quick after the yeah. first year so i know i know he showed up with me um because he's my husband <laughs> and he probably <laughs> thought that i was absolutely out of my mind um but he made friends there it's like they had like a husband awesome. club and um <laughs> yeah they had a great time really a really great time uh, even some of the vendors had an extra extra great time um, but we came home and, and he said the funniest thing to me and he said these embroidery people are like a lot more fun than i thought they would be i wasn't expecting them to be this True. fun and they nice. are it's a great group so, nice. yeah. I, I felt the same way when we uh, started hanging out with eric so <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're more fun than we seem despite the hours and hours of moving little dots around on screen <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> maybe that's why we're fun and we just we break out of our shell once this little yeah. Yeah. You gotta well, get you, a little loose after gone. all that yeah. <laughs> well your yes. husband can, your husband can start uh, start his tribe the uh, the plus one group um so <laughs> right. welcome, welcome to use that i i went to my wife's 20th high school reunion and all of the husbands were, were we, we made our own little plus one group in the back corner and made people buy us shots so yep. it was a lot of fun <laughs> all right well so you, you'd mentioned you having a business uh uh, attorney show up at, at your events and stuff like that. So let, let, let's let's kind of dive into that a little bit here. So what do you think is sure. the chief, the problem, maybe the biggest problem that you see people facing when they're they're going from hobbyist to uh, you know a business now all of a sudden? You know what 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 are those things and and how can they avoid those pitfalls? Maybe I think probably the biggest challenge to overcome would be to change your mindset. Um, because I'm someone who started as a hobbyist and kind of fell into business, I realize there are other people like that. Um, but you have to completely change your mindset. It doesn't turn into, you know, you're creating a great product. Um, oh, someone says, hey, you should sell that because that's what happened to me. And then you just start selling it, yeah. which is what I did. Um, but actually, there are a lot of other steps to take to properly set up a business. Um, and I think a big a big pitfall is that we that transition from hobby to business tend to underestimate ourselves, underprice ourselves, um, and just underdo the whole thing. Just because we're selling to the kids market, to the gift market, doesn't mean that we're not legitimate businesses. Um, mm -hmm. We produce a lot of great work. We spend a lot of money. We do, you know, we buy a lot of blanks. Um, and we should give ourselves credit for that um, and look at ourselves from the beginning. Just make a complete and total mindset. Um, stop thinking as a hobbyist you are not a small business you're a legit business and look at yourself that way price yourself that way set yourself up that way get all the resources um, that are available to you talk to a business attorney look into how do i set up my business how do i structure my business uh, how do i budget my business um 
what kind of protections and legal things are there that I need to take care of, look into copyright and trademark and just get all your ducks in a row. You can do this while you're running your business. Um, it's not like you have to stop and overwhelm yourself and then, you know, how am I going to start a business? Dive in, you know, start your business. Your business is the minute someone asks you, are you going to sell that? And you say, yes, you're a business. Get yourself set up, collect sales tax, you know, learn learn about all the aspects of running a business. Look at your business like you're a big established business already and not just, you know, just because you might be producing out of your guest room or whatever. So many businesses, legitimate businesses, I think all businesses start small. Apple started yeah. in a garage, you know, not that any of us are going to start producing, you know, <laughs> software or anything like that. You never know. Never know. But yeah. um, yeah. I do think, yeah, it's really important to look at yourself um, as a legitimate business from the beginning, give yourself that credit, um, price your work and, and value your time. Um, and I think that's a big, that is a big pitfall that we face when transitioning from hobby to business. Nice. Okay. Oh, well, absolutely. Great advice. I couldn't agree with you more. Anytime I've done, I've, ta <laughs> I've taught pricing to people uh, several times. I do pricing uh, both kind of in a commercial space, but also in crossover spaces. Some of the shows I go to are crossover hobbyists as well. And you are absolutely right. The first thing people don't really jump into is that it not only is it a business they don't even they have to be really told like you have a value it's not just your hobby it's not just mm -hmm. some fun thing you do yes this is a service people are coming to you for if they wanted to do it themselves they could do it for a hobby like this is this is a business exactly. <laughs> that, you need to do. that is awesome that you're telling people yes. that and that's just once again i'm going to keep cheering for you because <laughs> <laughs> so, as we talk high about five. business, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, virtual high five is happening <laughs> all the time right now. It's it's 100% all day long. Uh, but <laughs> as, as you talk about the importance of business, and I think that certainly pricing is part of that. Also, we have we have talk about telling your story and marketing and promoting your brand. And I think that's something people mm -hmm. don't really always get a hold of. I mean, sometimes as hobbyists, they do share things that they do, but they don't think of what it is to have a brand and a purpose. I mean, what would you give as an ad advice to the hobbyist decorators trying to kind of define their brand and build up that following in that first list of clients? Well, I think we're all individuals and we all have really unique um, strengths and weaknesses and things that we can share with the world. So uh, to have a brand, you have to be unique. You have to stand out. So it's it would be a shame to come in from a hobby perspective into the business and just try and mold yourself into what someone else is doing. Uh, you can't remold yourself. You can't change the way that you were made, you, your strengths and your weaknesses. I mean, of course you can work on those things, but it would be foolish to say, oh look, you know, this other business is doing really well and this is what they're doing and now I'm gonna do it because do you even like that? Is Are you passionate about it? Does it light your fire? Um, so, you know, that's that's a huge pitfall that I think uh, people face when trying to establish themselves as a brand. Uh, you can't have a brand if you're just trying to ride the coattails of someone else's brand. Um, and, you know, that does cause some some friction in the industry. And I just don't think it's a recipe for success because eventually you're going to get uh, you're going to get bored trying to follow along with some what someone else is doing or you're going to feel, um, you know, comparison is the thief of joy. So you're going to watch another well-established business, maybe do some things that you would like to do. Maybe you'll try to do that. Uh, maybe you'll try to undersell them. But again, then you're undervaluing yourself. So that's not going to work either. So really, yeah. I think you have to think, you know, what lights my fire? What am I going to bring to the table? What am I going to, you know, bring to this industry that's different, that's already out there? Um, I'll use my husband, the um, world's greatest husband, again, as, a, <laughs> as, as an example, because He's done something recently that's really inspirational. So we we were faced with an unexpected job loss. But on the mm -hmm. flip side, I happen to live in um, a house where we have three home offices and we're full of um, apparel decoration mm -hmm. equipment. I mean, we have <laughs> embroidery machines. We have vinyl cutters. We have vinyl. We even have yeah. a – and I'm not a screen printer, but it looks like a helicopter, the spinning thing in my garage, <laughs> you know, with all the um, screens and squeegees and ink and all that stuff. So we have all this, you know, here. and to his credit, he didn't look at our, our local market and say, hey, uh, what's everybody else doing to make tons of money? Or, you know, he said, what what lights my fire? And I've mentioned, so he's he's big into sports. Um, we, you know, he loves to watch football. He watches football and he doesn't just see the game. He comments, oh, look at their uniforms or look how they look. So he thought, all right, um, I've already been involved in sports. Sports lights my fire. I have connections in this industry already. I'm going to start a sports apparel business. Nice. And he did. And, and he's, you know, he's kicking butt. 
Um, but I think that that comes from not looking at what's already going on or what he thinks is going to make him the most money. He, you know, it's not realistic to start a business doing something that you don't enjoy. Yeah. I mean, you might as well just get back to the nine to five if you're going to do that. So <laughs> right. uh, that's, I think that's a big thing about um, establishing yourself as a brand is your individuality and, and putting that into what you're offering. Oh, absolutely. I, I just got to jump in there and say on this show, we talk <laughs> about niche marketing all the time. Yeah. That is organic niche marketing. It's best. Seriously. Yeah. So yeah. When people ask about niche marketing and they think of it as a buzzword doing that. The thing that lights your fire that you have connections in that you already know. Exactly. That's niche marketing. It's best. That's it. That's where it is. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, speaking of niche markets, uh, uh, you know, you've talked a lot about the, the children's market. So w what are the opportunities? Mm -hmm. What are the what are the problems you have with with the children's market? And and uh, what other markets are you seeing that would be a great fit for the person who's going hobby to professional? Well, one thing about the kids market is I think um, the majority of us that come into the kids market do it because we have kids mm -hmm. or we have grandkids. Um, and kids grow up. Um, I have six kids and my oldest is 20 years old. And when, when we started this, um, she was like seven. So I was making her cute outfits and things, but you know, she's 20 now and I have 17 year old. I also have a two year old. So I mean, my interest <laughs> is still, my heart is still in the kids market, but um, kids grow up. So that's where, you know, that's where you look for where do you have existing connections? Um, do your kids mm -hmm. play sports? How are you involved in the community? How can you offer your unique services to those unique um, segments of, of the community um, so that as your group around you grows, you can grow with them as your customers grow. It's not just the business owner who's growing as their interests change, but Mm -hmm. uh, your customers are growing and changing with you. That's one thing that we've learned big time with this event is, you know, you have to keep on top of how everyone around you is evolving and how, how you're evolving. So that's uh, the gift market, personalized items. Those things are kind of ageless. So those are also great areas where if you're interested in the kids market, you can kind of delve into that too and have that um, going simultaneously. And kids, I mean, kids are born every day. So there's always going to be new kid customers, but if it's not lighting your fire anymore, then, you know, those are some other directions that, that I think you could go. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sharon says, uh, now it can be college and weddings. So there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. nice. Good stuff. Okay. So, uh, Lindsay, we, we, uh, we connected with you through, uh, a former guest that we had on Lisa Shaw and, and fantastic person and we really enjoyed our time with her one of the comments that she made as we were kind of connecting and and getting our show to, today together was that your the applique getaway and all that other stuff it's about cooperation above competition um and that your mentality yeah. is that uh, you know this is one of my favorite sayings that rising tide lift all lifts all boats so um you know, we've heard from from Eric that there's sometimes some tension between the cottage craft embroiderers and the and the commercial world, even just between the digitizing shops and stuff like that. So, how do you think the decorators can benefit from a more cooperative mindset? Well, if you've heard me mention my colleagues a few times yeah. um, during this podcast, those people are actually my competition. Um, but I've chosen to view them as my colleagues instead. Mm -hmm of competition. Um, I feel like if we're all going to be in the same house, so to speak, it's better to get along. Um, yeah. And I've made some great friendships. Um, these people are doing the same thing that I'm doing. We relate on so many levels. It would be foolish to, um, you know, to lose out on those connections just because I'm so competitively minded, which I'm not at all. I'm probably the least competitive person <laughs> <laughs> that you'll ever meet. Um, but just just for me to think, like, what if I was the only person out there selling designs? Would that mean that I have all the business or would that mean that our industry is tanking? Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Point. you know, and I, I as one person don't have the ability to sustain an entire industry. So, of course, there has to be more than one person um, working in each segment of our, our field. It's just it has to be the way it is. And if we can make that work to our advantage, then then why not? It's just more enjoyable that way. And um, I have a lot of great digitizer friends. And there's been times where, you know, who else can you go to 
when your customer is yelling at you because their embroidery machine doesn't send doesn't read a zip file and you sent them a zip file. I mean, who, who else would understand that kind of stuff? So, you know, these I've I've met their f families and um, it's just a really nice connection to have. And, um, you know, it does require mutual respect. Um, mm -hmm. We have to respect each other's businesses, I think, yeah. uh, in order to sustain those relationships and friendships. And then also accepting the fact that out there in the world, everything is not sunshine and rainbows. You're going to have people <laughs> uh, working here that have a huge chip on their shoulder that think everyone is out to copy them. And that's where all their focus is going instead of <laughs> focusing on their business. Yeah. Or you're going to have those people who actually do like to just go out and copy everybody um, instead of being original. <laughs> and that's just, you know, it is what it is. They're going to be there if that's how they want to focus their energy instead of on their business. I would prefer to to stay in my lane and support other people who are, are doing the same thing uh, that I do because I feel like the health and well-being of the industry as a whole is what's going to help sustain all of our businesses, not just mine. If we have a tanking industry because there aren't enough um, you know, people out there offering goods or services, then that's not good for any of us. So I definitely um, believe in, in diversity and uh, building these connections and, and friendships and just uh, supporting all you know we all support each other and it's going to help us all in the long run nice that is awesome, awesome. What, a, what a great way to kind of <laughs> put a cap on how much you put together especially with getaway and what i'll say is people are really excited about the getaway in fact your your existing people are out here asking us questions about it in the comments here <laughs> uh, we have uh cindy copeland asking uh is the class schedule out yet for applicate getaway i can't find it i want to find the list of classes she's very animated in getting that so <laughs> Can we get that list of classes? Is it something we can see right now? <laughs> well, what we do usually is we put out the class topics um, All right. first so that you know what type of material we're <laughs> going to be covering. Uh, and since we do get a lot of our registration coming up, um, I mean, approximately a month leading into the event is when we get a lot of our registration mm -hmm. so that we don't have to backtrack and resend all of our early registrants. Okay, now, you know, go ahead and select your classes. We mm -hmm. put the, um, the specific class schedule out about a month before the event to allow everybody to go ahead and, and select their classes. The uh, the VIP class schedule is already on the website and on our registration site because those are classes that you select when you register. Um, those are classes that are, you know, we feel are really interesting or maybe take your business to a, to another level. So nice. those are done um, where we have a little bit more time. Um, those are a little bit, they're longer, uh, they're 90 minutes instead of 60. So those are already out on the website. but. Uh, the class topics are there, um, everything that we're going to be covering this year, and we'll be adding some more descriptions um, as they come in from our instructors. And then about a month out, you'll go ahead and be able to see the exact schedule, exactly how it's going to happen at the event. Excellent. And if you're interested, another plus is if you're interested in, in learning something that you don't see on the website, um, there's mm -hmm. still time to request classes. We can let our instructors oh. know, hey, we have a lot of people who are interested in this. And since we don't release the schedule until about a month out, we can we can get that in for you. So, you know, we Excellent. can meet your needs that way. Awesome. Well, let's Very let's cool. talk about that real quick. And <laughs> before we get you out of here, Lindsay, uh, give us give us the specifics of the, the getaway and, and where can people find out more? I've got the website listed uh, in the video version here, but uh, give us the details when, where all the all the pertinence. All right. We're uh, June 21st through the 23rd of this year. Um, we're in the Dallas Fort Worth area at the Sheridan DFW Airport, which is right next to the airport. So if you're flying in, uh, the shuttle will come pick you up. And, uh, and bring you to the hotel. Um, the first day is going to be a shopping preview day. So um, you can come in and check out all the great stuff and, and meet with the vendors and get all the good sales without having to rush off to any classes. Uh, there are some classes during our vendor setup time. So as soon as you're done with your VIP classes, uh, shopping will be open. You can go do all that fun stuff. And then Saturday and Sunday is a mix of shopping and classes. Um, we also have some incredible prizes. That's one thing. If you see the pictures on our website where everybody's screaming and putting their hands up in the air, it's not because they're like super excited to see me. Maybe my husband. No, it's actually the, the prizes. Um, it's the prizes. Everybody gets really pumped about nice. the, the, it's just awesome. a fun weekend. So yeah, yeah, fantastic. So tell us, uh, Lindsay, where people can uh, find out more about you and, and, and get in touch and, and, uh, yeah, just give us give us where people can connect with you. I'm sure they're going to love love this. And and uh, we've obviously seen in the comments here a ton of people interested in uh, becoming part of your tribe. So how do they do that? 
Awesome. Yeah. Well, you can find um, my my design business is called uh, Linny Penny, which I know it's a really silly name, but I'm I'm kind of silly, so it's okay. Uh, it's L Y N N I E P I N N I E dot com. Um, that's where we have our designs. We have an Etsy shop too. Uh, and then for the applique getaway, it's appliquegetaway.com. Um, you can see everything about the event there, our event sponsors, our vendors, the class topics, more about um, our VIP registration and uh, you can get registered. And we would love to add more people to our tribe. It's really an experience that I cannot um, put in words or put in a video. It's just it's a big like a family reunion, but you also get to grow your business and meet awesome people and buy great stuff. And it's it's cool. Very awesome. All right. Well, tell your husband I might come just for the plus one event. But uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> nice. All right. He's ready. I saw that you all do beer and chicken wings, so he would fit right in. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Lindsay. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time today and uh, looking forward to talking again Thanks soon. Thanks for having me. All righty. Bye bye. Yes. Awesome. Good stuff, right. man. That was fantastic. fantastic. Uh, and, I, I and love, I love ahead, talking uh, with people who, uh, who are super excited about their business. And, and Lindsay obviously is an uh, uh, excellent guest. We will definitely have to have her back on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Maybe a, a follow up and uh, get the uh, how did it go and give us the yeah, full yeah, rundown. Yeah. Um, that should be great. So, yeah, I mean, th could, the comments were fantastic today. You guys, the regulators on fire for sure. Um, so make sure that uh, you're getting in there and, and just just keep those comments going just because we end the show here and well, we're going to go into bonus time, but uh, when we end the show here in about five, 10 minutes, that doesn't mean it's over. So let's keep those comments going. Let's keep that communication going. Lots of great information. We couldn't get to all of it during the show. So again, if you're listening on the podcast version, you have to get over to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys. All right, Terry. So uh, we talked about five things from Joe. So uh, since we're running slim on time, I'm going to give you the floor and, and uh, get out of your way. So you I'm, I'm going to run, run through these five things, five questions to ask uh, <laughs> when you're thinking about adding an employee to your team. Number one, are we planning to grow? Number two, if we accomplish our growth goals, are we currently able to handle the increased workload? Excellent point. Uh, number three, will having the extra set of hands free up some of my time so that I can check on pricing adjustments that may need to take place to account for the additional payroll? Uh, number four, with the addition of a team member, uh, will this take uh, things off my plate that I should be doing uh, anyway and, and free up time for more focus on the big picture? That I'm going to underline that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and number five, do I currently work very far outside the typical eight hour day? If you're an entrepreneur, by the way, you have the freedom to work all the hours there are in the day. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and and uh, Joe's example is waking up at 4.30 a.m. to get a head start on the day and falling asleep with your face on the keyboard of your laptop in the evening. <laughs> the majority of people in our industry don't mind putting in a hard day's work. But uh, however, we should have the goal of being able to accomplish what we need to do within a reasonable time frame. Uh, if adding to your team will help make that happen, do it and use some of the free time to make adjustments um, for compensating your new hire if they are needed. And um, and then uh, Joe uh, gave us the his last name right here on the screen. Joe uh, Ordnow. <laughs> or now, yep. Now. Yep. now we know. Joe, Joe or now, and uh, he had to run off to the uh, the shirt lab call. He's part of that group, but you can find uh, find Joe's information at or ortnowart.com. I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, just one second. So, and, and Joe's avatar is holding a, a beautiful little baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So good, good stuff from Joe, and and we really appreciate it. Joe actually emailed me too, and and just said, you know, he was actually thinking about this, and uh, as he was thinking about this question, he's like this could be a great five things. And he's right. So uh, if you're thinking about something and it could be a great five things, again, go to our okay. website, tworegularguys.com slash five things and uh, send them over and we'll uh, get it on the show here and we will feature you. We'll, we'll, plug your website. We'll, uh, you know, wh whatever you want, we'll probably do it. So <laughs> he, he is, he has been our five things contributor. So he is, yeah. he is crushing it. That's two to everybody else's zero. All right. You know, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe there's going to be a Reggie award for the best five things. Ooh, it could happen. Take a look at. 
if somebody had a notepad to write that down on Terry, um, that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yellow legal right pad. There, dude. Junior yellow it's legal pad. Right nice, nice. All right. I'll have all my notes during the zombie apocalypse and you guys won't have any. <laughs> <laughs> this so, is so Sherry says, don't all family rooms have embroidery machines and sewing machines? <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. Mine all do. <laughs> I, I like Lindsay's comment, too, about uh, the 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 circular thing out in their garage for screen printing. <laughs> uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, tons tons of uh, quotable stuff for sure throughout the, throughout the whole entire conversation, both in the comments and from Lindsay. So, uh, again, thank her, uh, thanks to her for her time. A couple quick events here, guys, and and then uh, we'll we'll get on out of here. Uh, for me, I'm uh, still doing the the small business Saturdays every Saturday, trying to do Saturdays. I actually was on Friday last week and uh, had a rabbi with me, and it was fantastic. He was a fantastic guy, and uh, we talked about ethics and and you know having ethics as your guide will is better business. So. Uh, Make sure you go check that out over at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Aaron Montgomery info. Uh, so tomorrow I haven't posted it yet, but I will after this show. Uh, I'm going to be talking about back to school. Yes, I know it is still April and I'm talking about back to school, but uh, there's a reason why. So um, mm -hmm. make sure that you tune in tomorrow. After uh, It's going to be afternoon. Got volleyball with the uh, with my seven year old tomorrow morning. So uh 3 p.m. Central Time is when I'll be doing that tomorrow. And uh, and then I also wanted to share, uh, we talked about it with, with Lindsay, the rising tide raises all boats. So I have a column in a and &E Magazine, and it's called The Rising Tide of Business. So uh, I will put a link in the show notes here. But uh, basically, the, this particular column was about keeping up with the changes in SEO. So uh, I'm would love for you guys to check that out and, and get your feedback on that. So, and then uh, the last two things for me, uh, we've got DAX Chicago, Reggie award-winning DAX Chicago coming up here and May 3rd uh, at 1230, I'll be presenting developing a business plan. And uh, then shortly thereafter at 2.20 in the afternoon, I will be presenting being customer centric equals, equals in capital letters, uh, more profits. So uh, two, two passion areas of mine, and I can't wait to share that with the folks there at DAX Chicago. So uh, make sure you come check that out. Terry, what about you? I've got uh, next Friday, as I mentioned at the top of the show, I'm going to be in Atlanta uh, with the Equipment Zone crew, and we're going to be doing an Epson F2100 DTG class. Uh, there are still some openings there. It's a free class, but you do need to sign up. Uh, you can do that at the Equipment Zone website. Uh, I'm going to fly home on Friday night, <laughs> and <laughs> Saturday morning, I'm going to be doing uh, my complete screen printing business course at Workhorse Products here in Phoenix. Uh, so that's April 27th, 28th. We've got a couple of seats left there as well. And you can sign up for that at my website, terrycombs.com, where you can find all of my events. How about you, Eric? Well, uh, I'm also going to be at DAX Chicago. You know, we're all going to be at DAX Chicago. But uh, May 3rd, 1.35 p.m. This is the last time you'll be able to catch the digitizing difference. That's my long class with uh, 3D foam digitizing, how to do smooth gradients, and how to make performance wear behave on the embroidery machine. And on May 4th, we're going to have a 12.30, DAX Chicago, again, patch making for fun and profit. And it's not only uh, the types of things you can do to do small run patches on your embroidery machine, but how to digitize all the borders and the specialty files. Uh, also, just going to share the couple things that I have out in print right now. Uh, Printware Magazine, I've got one called Patching Through, speaking of patches, where I talk about uh, how to work with value and profit and pricing. I relate it directly to patches, but it's really about value proposition for pricing. So I'd love to have people get in on this, especially after the conversation with Lindsay. And we also have the last one uh, in Image Magazine in the UK. Images Magazine in the UK, you can get it digitally in the States, folks. <laughs> and it's called It's Good <laughs> to Talk. A lot of people have really been uh, vibing with this particular article because it's about tips for you to communicate to your digitizer and get the best results uh, quicker for your design. So really, that's something that a lot of people have asked me about. And it's uh, interesting that I'm doing it in the UK mag first. But get out there, check out Image Magazine Digital, and you can get a, a It's Good to Talk is what it's called. Uh, great tips for you to just get on the same page with digitizers when you're outsourcing your digitizing. Cool. Hey, Eric, uh, under your uh, rapper name, E. Rich, uh, is that one of your songs, <laughs> Smooth Gradient? I think uh, Smooth Gradient. No, that's that's the whole album, actually. That's a B-side. <laughs> Very nice. 
<laughs> it will be now. <laughs> so anybody out there who wants to make that album cover, I will uh, give you any images of me you want. <laughs> <laughs> e. Rich the rapper, awesome. All right, hey, real quick, uh, back I'm to down. Dax. Yeah, back to Dax Chicago here. Um, also, another uh, thing I wanted to mention that I forgot. Uh, so. After the Dax party that night, we are going to pull off some sort of a uh, of an oh. event. Uh, Terry uh, is going to have to bail out early unless anybody can uh, talk American Airlines into letting him change his flight without it being a fortune. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does fly first class all the time. You think he'd uh, have a little pull? You there. think he'd have some pull? <laughs> yeah, but, but not, not to. But uh, Eric, I think, will be able mm -hmm. to fill in for him. So. Not only uh, are we excited about kind of having that the party after Dax, but uh, just so everybody knows, that's going to be our 300th episode. So seven years, awesome. 300 episodes. So it's 300 episodes. So we're going to celebrate that 300th episode. We, we haven't got all the details done quite yet, but uh, we'll figure it out. Um, Todd, uh, who's a regular listener, he is uh, suggested Buffalo Wild Wings, which is right there. So got to get that uh, coordinated. And... Um, and I'm actually going to stop by Todd's place on the way back. He he's put in a new uh, setup where he's got his uh, printing business in with a uh, sports uh, batting cages, kind of uh, oh, courts and stuff like that. So um, the plan was for me to come in there for Small Business Saturdays and uh, nice. do do a live event from there. So I'm looking forward to uh, awesome. to checking that out as well. So anyhow, big stuff coming up. I know we're well into bonus time here today. <laughs> so thank you very much to Lindsay. Make sure that you go and check out what she's got going on over at applicagetaway.com and uh, make sure you tell her that you heard about them from the two regular guys <laughs> doug <laughs> doug gibson said seven years years <laughs> <laughs> who knew doug that people would uh, actually listen to uh, these two regular guys and but doug, you say seven guy. said that in seven uh, words so that it i like to show this folks <laughs> yeah this is my 2013 reggie award mug very and nice. you can see the images yes <laughs> in a minute <laughs> <laughs> so again thank you so much to Lindsay for for her joining us today and and uh, such a fun show and thank you guys the listeners for all of the fantastic comments and and uh, making this what it is and uh, eric i uh, want to give you a special thanks for help uh, doing uh, the most of the heavy lifting putting this show together <laughs> and you can <laughs> we also want to thank uh, our sponsor in brilliance and their family of products Yep, ex absolutely. I've got too many things going on over here, Terry, so I lost my spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was a step ahead of myself, but uh, next week we're going to be joined by Clay Barbara. I think I got that wrong, but uh, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll check that out. It uh, is Clay Barbera. Clay Barbera. Hi, Clay Barbera. There, Barbera. We go. there we go. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about Corel and, and his new venture, uh, the Corel uh, in training, I believe it is. So uh, yeah, yeah. looking forward to talking to Clay about uh, Corel Draw. So uh, join us next week. And uh, there we go. We're going to have a great week next week. All right. Until then, I'm Terry Combs. Uh, he's Eric Campbell. He's Aaron Montgomery. And <laughs> <laughs> we are the two regular guys. Plus one. <laughs> <laughs> regular guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.